this is a new area for my lab. We've published a very high impact paper uh, earlier this year on this very topic. So the hippocampus is the part of the brain that is involved with what we typically, how we typically define cognition, like memory and learning and understanding. The hippocampus, like most sections of the brain, relies on two fuels, glucose and ketones. Glucose appears to be what's, what's problematic. So my study found that when these were actually human brain samples, human hippocampal slices from, from tissue donors, and people that had Alzheimer's disease had a reduction in glucose-related genes or glucose metabolism-related genes. All the genes involved in the metabolism of glucose were all down. Every single gene had much lower expression in the hippocampus of people who died with Alzheimer's compared with the people who didn't. In contrast, the genes involved in ketone metabolism were almost totally normal within the entire hippocampus. There were a couple genes that were down, but otherwise were all up the same in both instances in, in both brains. This is important because it also it, um, acts almost foundational to other research that has actually quantified in living, breathing humans that the brain takes in and metabolizes less glucose in states of early cognitive decline or outright Alzheimer's disease, but it can still take in and metabolize ketones without any deficit. We're looking at the degree to which the hippocampus becomes insulin resistant. Now, I'd mentioned earlier that not all tissues need insulin for glucose uptake. Well, the hippocampus is one of those that do at least some of the glucose uptake that comes into the hippocampus is through insulin dependent mechanisms. So if the hippocampus is becoming insulin resistant, now it's unable to get as much of its energy from glucose. And that matters so much because the brain is an energy hog. It has an enormous energy demand among the highest metabolic rates um, of any organs in the body. And so if the metabolic demands of the brain is up here and glucose, which is the common fuel, just because most people are eating glucose all the time and they have never any ketones because their insulin's always elevated. So they have this much energy demand. Glucose is providing that much energy demand. As the hippocampus is becoming insulin resistant, now glucose can't meet all the energetic needs and we're left with an energy gap. Now, again, the tragedy is that the body is swimming in a sea of glucose, but insulin isn't working well enough to get the glucose in. And adding insult to injury, the person is eating starchy and sugary carbohydrates so frequently that they never have any ketones in their blood, which would enable the brain to make up that energetic gap. So the view in my lab and others is that uh, Alzheimer's disease to some degree, and I'm not claiming that it would be all of it, but to some degree the cognitive impairment is a result of insulin resistance of the hippocampus. And so if we can improve the insulin resistance of the hippocampus, we can perhaps help the hippocampus make up that energy gap, get back to full energy, and then get back to full function.